Hey everyone, welcome. This is Tim McDowell coming to you with another Creating Is Hangout, and I am so excited today. I get to be joined by not only my by partner and co-founder Ayala Farron, but also with Nancy Schwartzman. How are both of you doing today? Woohoo! Doing well. <laughs> Doing great if we're all together today. I mean, it's a fantastic day. Great way to start the day here in California. Well, I think I mean I think this is the great great thing about these hangouts is is what we're doing is even though it's just the three of us on this hangout, we do you know we do encourage people to watch live. We encourage people to comment. We you know if you're on Twitter, you can use the hashtag creating is, and we try and intersperse and and really create a conversation, not just us talking at people. So uh, we'll definitely have the conversation here, and hope everybody outside will have a conversation as well, not just during this. 20 to 30 minutes that we're going to be talking, but also afterwards, because it's not just about what we're doing right now, it's about what we can do moving forward. And so um, with the housekeeping being taken care of, I would like to kind of turn it over to Ayala just to explain to everybody what we're doing with Creating Is. Sure. Um, thanks, Tim and, and Nancy. It's so great to see you and be here. Uh, this is what I love about technology. It connects us and allows us to have conversations. And Tim and I um, spent a lot of time thinking about some of the biggest problems in the world. And one that came uh, close to our hearts was this whole leadership crisis that we're facing in the world today. And we really looked at it and said, you know, instead of just talking about it, let's do something. And so what we've decided to do is have is just the beginning of a bigger vision that we have to start having conversations with people that we see are leaders and and leaders in terms of being selfless, innovative, humble, and having amazing results. And so we've had some great conversations with people and we want to have more conversations with with other leaders out there. Um, who are really creating and, and doing something to change the world. And, you know, from what you said, Tim, earlier, one of the things that's so important to us is how do we all take action? How do we do something? How do we not feel overwhelmed by the world and, and do something? And that's what it's about. It's about having conversations that lead to action. And one of the most exciting parts for me about Creating Is, which I've seen from, from everyone that we've done, is that people just decide to talk to the person that we talked about and offer some help, some guidance, some questions, whatever it is, to move it forward. And so this is about reimagining leadership and creating a whole new generation of bold leaders who want to take action. Well, and so we are very excited because I think we feel that we have one of those new generation of leaders right in front of us with us today. So Nancy, why don't you tell us a little bit about you and what you do? Sure. Um, this is so fun and I'm so glad to be on this uh, call with you all and having this conversation and honored to be the way I described leader, selfless, innovative, and humble. Like honored to, I love those terms. I love how you all, are, both of you are defining what that means, um, what leadership means and being included is, is uh, really an honor. Um, so I am a New York based uh, kind of multiple multidisciplinary person. Um, I am a very strong advocate and activist around gender based violence. Um, it's an issue very close to me. Um, I've explored it in uh, documentary films. Um, now mobile technology. Um, I also am really intrigued and interested in new technologies and how we can facilitate storytelling, um, all different kinds of storytelling, and connecting with all different kinds of audiences. So um, essentially kind of transmedia, new media, um, gender person, let's say. I'm keeping it vague so that we can go into more detail, but if that's too vague, let me know. <laughs> well, I don't think it's too vague because we will definitely get into a lot more, I think, about what at least one aspect of that multifaceted uh, world that you're, you're involved with um, in particular. So, you know, I think, you know, one of the, the things that can really kind of help us, I, I think, kind of kick off the conversation here, Nancy, is can you explain, you know, what problem you saw out there, um, you know, and, and that you're trying to solve? Yeah, um, the problem that uh, became very clear to me um, from an early age as a teenager that just kept presenting itself to me um, through my relationships uh, was gender-based violence. And that 
means any kind of physical or mental violence um, enacted on someone because of their sexuality, because of their gender, during sex, um, you know, anything around, I mean, at the core of gender-based violence is human relationships and how we look at each other. And, um, you know, a huge part of my work in preventing gender-based violence and talking about it is also promoting a healthy sexuality that there's this human right that we have called human sexuality and we all have a right to it and, it, and it, we all have the right to be empowered around it, to enjoy it, to experience it safely in the way that we want to. Um, and, you know, it's not a problem I saw in an abstract way. It was like every friend I had in middle school and high school and just, you know, all the stories I've heard my whole life um, around fairly negative experiences around sexuality um, really inspired me to make a change in this space. Great. And so when you think about um, that's such a huge topic because I think we spend a lot of time talking about um, you know how to prevent violence or the violence itself and I think it's it gets glorified a lot through the storytelling um, and yet you bring up the point about that we are all human and we have this sexuality and that's okay. Mm -hmm. And how, how when, when you looked at that problem, how did people respond to, to that piece of it? Mm -hmm. um, I think that was a really, and it still remains, although it's shifting, um, insisting that human sexuality um, is a human right and that women especially have the right to explore their sexuality and experience it in a positive way. Um, it's fascinating to see how different cultures react to that dialogue because I've had the dialogue um, started in the United States, in the Middle East, in parts of Africa, in Latin America. You know, everybody has an opinion about sex, sexuality, and women's roles. Um, and what's really cool about doing this work is that I get to plug in to all the amazing people around the world who are really charged up about female sexuality and about giving women and girls their rights. Um, there's a ton of pushback around that, and the pushback is um, it ties into blaming victims for getting raped, right? So it's this really, they're really connected, like demanding and insisting that women have the right to be sexual always comes with this flip side of like, well then you get what you deserve, you know? And so really like working in that space and pushing and demanding different definitions, different tools, different stories is awesome because it's so important and it's what is going to change the needle and I just believe in it so fully so yeah it, it sounds like it's also a movement around opening minds and shifting thinking uh, mm -hmm. to a big degree so maybe you can share with us a little bit about you know your solution of how you approach this problem um, and uh, some stories around that would be great Sure. I mean, it all, it started um, with a film that I, I did in 2009, and uh, the film was called The Line. So it's about the line of consent. Um, where is it? You know, where is it sexual assault and consensual? Where does a woman essentially give up her rights? And I used my own story as an example, which was really hard and really important. Um, for me as someone just to say, yeah, this is my story, this is who I am, and I'm not making apologies for who I am, um, and this is what happened to me, and it's still not okay. So really stepping out of, um, I should be ashamed, to make other people look and say, should I be ashamed? And for the most part, most people are like, no, you shouldn't be ashamed. You know, it's like really gives people a vehicle to understand, whoa, um, I've never thought about sexual assault in that way. I've never thought about the line and my own line. So helping people understand their own lives through my film has been really cool. Um, so we built this, this, I made this film and then I made a campaign that would reach audiences and we reached thousands of people. And so thousands of young people are like sending me, you know, I ask them where is your line and they answer, you know, all these amazing things about their sexuality, about what they want, their favorite thing, their least favorite thing, you know, very open and personal with a total stranger posting these images on the internet, which I just think is amazing. <laughs> and getting to see other people's responses, like, oh, those kids say that, people drew me pictures. I went to, um, you know, a conservative campus, I did a lot in colleges at that time, but um, conservative campus in Colorado, and I'm worried, oh God, this, this film is going to freak everyone out, and the kids, they were so, to use a, 
you know, official term. They were so balls out about their response, <laughs> like, you know, really open, really frank stuff. And it was clear everyone's so hungry for these conversations. No one gets to talk about sex in this way. They have to talk about pregnancy or diseases, but they're not talking about what goes on when the lights go off or they stay on or when they go into a bedroom, right? So that started this conversation around sexuality and boundaries. And of course, because I'm bringing up um, violence, people would share their stories with me around violence. And so I, I got this really deep understanding of this age group, like 18 to 22 college students, um, about what's going on for them in their lives. Like, where are they most vulnerable? Where does violence happen to them? Um, so what we did, moving, moving from that point, um, uh, the White House issued a challenge um, to empower citizens to create mobile tools to solve various problems. And this was called the Apps Against Abuse Challenge. And um, it was uh, to try to prevent violence in this college age bracket. And my first thought when I saw this challenge was like, well, I make movies. Like, I don't make mobile apps. Like, I don't even know what that is. Like, I, how am I going to do that? What does that even mean? <laughs> you know, and people were like pinging me on Twitter, like, hey, this has your name on it. I'm like, how? I don't know. I'm a filmmaker, you know? Um, but what happened was pretty amazing because the bones are there. Like, the ethos is there, the, the content is there. And we built this incredible team. There's three of us um, a female engineer developer. Um, an amazing designer who worked with me in the past and we created a mobile app called Circle of Six and um, very simple, very much for students, very much never blaming a victim um, for any of their behavior, just meeting people where they are, which is like my big ethos around any tool that you build, meet people where they are. This is not about judging them, this is not about telling them what they need, it's actually about finding out what people need and meeting them there, you know. Um, so Circle of Six won the White House Challenge, which was awesome. And uh, thank you, Cosmo Magazine, for putting us in there a bunch of times. We got thousands of downloads from that. And uh, you know, the app has since taken off in some really awesome directions. So um, I'm excited to move into the space of gender-based violence and technology. And you know, reaching 100,000 people quickly is like an amazing thing to be able to do. Um, from a three-person team, you know, so, yeah. <laughs> and so not being overly familiar with Circle of Six, yeah. the app, um, can you explain to, to me and to everybody else a little bit about what it what it does and how it really helps and, and empowers uh, the people that you're trying to help? Absolutely. Um, so Circle of Six works in this very simple way. Um, understanding, especially young people, how your friends or your family Young people are not interested in going to the police or authorities if they need advice or they need help, right? Your first call is to your friend. Um, so Circle of Six links you to um, six people that you choose. It's a closed um, SMS circle. And you choose your six contacts. And we give you guidelines on our website about how to do that. But most people know exactly who they want. Um, I want this person. I want this person. These are the people that have my back. You put them in your circle. And then we have three pre-programmed SMS messages. Um, one is, come and get me, I need help with your GPS coordinates. Um, the other is, interrupt me, call me and interrupt me, I don't feel comfortable. Um, I also joke that that's sort of the bad date app, like this is getting really awkward, just like, you know, you want someone to call and interrupt that situation immediately. Um, the third one is, I need to chat, I need advice um, with some resources. And then we have um, an emergency number. And the emergency button links you to two pre-programmed numbers and a third that you choose. So I really feel it's important for um, to give people options about who they want to call in an emergency. What kind of authority? A lot of people don't want to call the police and this is something I acknowledge and completely agree with and honor. Um, so we give people choices. Um, a lot of safety apps out there really emphasize danger, like stranger danger, you're running down the dark street and behind you. That's not what's going on on US college campuses. That's not what's going on for young people. It's more um, party situations, 3 o'clock in the morning. How am I going to get home? Do I walk home by myself? Do I go home with someone I don't really know? No, you get your friends to come get you. You know, um, So it's really about like 
emphasizing the positive relationships and enhancing them. And we've heard from students, and also we have a lot of other users, um, but we've heard from people like about the conversations they have when you put your circle together. It's like, I trust you. I want you to have my back in these kinds of situations. So it's like enhancing community, creating conversation, and providing real-time solutions. So I know also, Nancy, that um, you've done some work um, outside of the U.S. and uh, outside of campuses. Um, I remember when there was, um, and, you know, it's, it's a daily occurrence, unfortunately, in our world. It's not isolated anywhere. But I remember you did some work also in India as well. Maybe you can share that uh, with us as well. Yeah. Um, well, you know, this was what's kind of awesome and simple about Circle of Six is that it was a very specific targeted tool to a demographic. And what we saw happen was, wow, we're being downloaded all over the world. People are using us in um, 32 countries now. We have users everywhere. And it went beyond our original scope, which is really cool. Um, we were seeing a lot of activity in India early on because it's such kind of like a wired tech culture. They're very interested in, oh, you have this app, and that's really cool. We got emails from developers. So we always knew that India was paying attention to what we were doing. Um, but last December, um, a young woman, as I'm sure most people know, was um, brutally gang raped and murdered. Um, she was a student. She was going to the movies. I mean, she could have been anyone, anyone's friend, anyone's daughter. Um, you know, exactly like our demographic in the States, just exercising her right to be a young woman going out. And um, the case blew India wide open. India would not leave the streets. People were protesting. People were like, we've had enough of this violence. And actually, with my experience with the government, I think it took everyone by surprise how strongly India reacted and how it really exposed the endemic levels of violence that go on against women there every day. Especially women who are exercising their freedom, who are taking public transportation, who are going to school. Right? There's this whole new generation of young women in India. And she represented that woman and what happened to her was so ghastly. Um, so emails were flooding into my inbox. Indian press was talking about Circle of Six, Circle of Six. We were getting downloads, and my team, three of us, got on Skype. It was Christmas vacation. I was like, can't we have a vacation? What's going on? Um, you know, and we said, our users have completely spiked. Like, people are downloading us left and right. Should we localize for India? Should we do this? Should we make our resources utterly specific to people in India? What language should we make it in? Let's do this. And as a group, we said, you know, it's Christmas vacation. Let's do this. Um, it was a huge undertaking. I love, I love what it's like to like not know what you're doing and then do it, and you're like, oh my god, I can't believe we did that in three months. Um, it was amazing. Uh, so I had a lot of meetings with the UN, and I said, you know, we're gonna do it in India, and they were like, uh huh, what language? There's 138 languages spoken in India. Um, cool, we love your idea, but you know, how are you going to do this? How is it going to be useful? So um, we landed on New Delhi because it has an infrastructure of nonprofits that we could work with, and um, Hindi and English are spoken there, and the violence happened there. So um, in three months, we translated to Hindi. We worked out to get the phrases short enough so they would fit in one SMS message. That was funny because <laughs> our emergency alert in like beautiful Flora, you know, gorgeous Hindi was like seven um, SMS screens. So it's like emergency, C, 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 C. It doesn't really work. Um, so, like, oh God, yes, Hindi, cut it down, make it short, translatable. Um, you know, who are our nonprofit partners? Um, you know, and so we embedded resources that I feel really good about that are really respected and trustworthy for women. Um, we embedded hotline numbers uh, for people that people are going to pick up the phone when they call, and it's not the police necessarily. Um, and now we have 10,000 uh, downloads from India, and it's our second largest user base outside of the United States. So, um, you know, it happened really quickly, and then having time to think about it, it's like, wow, we did that in three months, and, like, it's it's in 10,000 people's phones. So And, and saving lives. Yeah, yeah. So um, our next phase with India is to do more of an evaluation and really get to know our users and I'll probably go there and get on the ground and and really figure out who these people are and how to create um, a feature phone build for uh, lower income users and you know kind of enhance and develop what we've done there. 
So, so when it comes to uh, leadership, what's your definition? And don't look at your notes of what we said. What do you think? I like your notes. <laughs> Um, I think uh, vision, uh, passion, um, dynamism, you know, um, being dynamic but also being focused as well. It's like this interesting tension. Um, and I think collaboration is really important. I see that more and more with this, especially if you're doing passion-based work that has a social change bent to it. Like if you're not collaborating, what are you doing? Um, you know we're all kind of in this pool together and we're all pushing for something far bigger than ourselves. So, um, yeah, so I think passion's a huge one because it's, uh, it's a lot of work and especially if you're building new things and people don't really understand what you're building and you're like, oh, why don't you get it? You'll get it in three years, I promise. You know, and there's a lot of, you know, explaining but keeping that focus and, um, yeah, so passion, vision, Dynamism and collaboration. And selfless, innovative, and humble. <laughs> <laughs> As you looked at the notes. <laughs> I broke the rules. <laughs> we love that, Nancy. We don't have any rules. We make the rules. <laughs> so I, I think, you know, one of the things that I just, I mean, I, I, I just, I love the story of just, and I think you demonstrate leadership just when I heard you, you know, your reaction to when people were telling you that you should join this competition for the app and you had nothing to do with the technology aspect of it and that didn't stop you. It just it just propelled you forward. And and to me that was like the clear as soon as you said that and you were telling us that story, you just defined leadership in that moment by doing that. So I just want to thank you for <laughs> Not stopping yourself by saying, this isn't what I know, this isn't what I, you know, <laughs> what I'm good at, and you just went forward with it because you knew it was the right thing to do. Yeah. So, um, well, tell me, you know, because this is the, the one thing that, that we are all about. You know, we always feel that we can have conversations, but, and everybody gets excited when we have conversations, but nobody actually does anything after we have the conversation. So what is it that we can actually do to help? That's an exciting uh, question. Well, I guess um, we as people, uh, we as the people listening, or uh, you two specifically, or Anyone in the world, anyone who wants to, to take action, mm -hmm. you know, somebody who's sitting there going, oh my God, Nancy is doing amazing things, there's nothing I could do because I, I just can't do it, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, Tim and I believe that we can all take a small action, sometimes it's just having a conversation mm -hmm. and listening and, and so what could, what could the rest of us do? Yeah, I think, um, what the rest of us could do is, I think, you know, when we talk about having conversations and listening, I think that's so important, and I think it's really important to, like, listen to yourself and really hear what it is that you care about and what you love and, like, taking that time to check in. Um, I, I was reading something interesting about your some your path as a person, and when you do a lot of different things, you can get, like, what am I doing? I'm overwhelmed. Why am I building three things consecutively? Do they even relate to each other? Shouldn't I be deep diving into one? And, you know, all the questions, if you're not a traditional person, if you didn't go to one school, then to another, and then got the job, and, you know, if that hasn't been your life, which is not mine, I don't think it's either of yours, you know, um, you know, having the confidence and faith that you're creating what is right for you. You're building your palette so that you can make your work on whatever canvas or whatever shape it needs to be, and that that can also change. But you know, reading about this path thing, um, I wish I could quote it, but I can't. But it was sort of like as you go deeper into what makes you tick as a person and like what you love and what you care about, your path becomes just so clear because there's actually very specific choices that you can make. Like you guys creating these sets of conversations and your interest in leadership. Like of course this is happening, and then the next thing will feel inevitable. So I guess like linking people to 
you know, I think what we all can do and what I need to do like every day is, is you check in with yourself and then you say, well, what feels inevitable? Like this feels inevitable, like it has to happen. So then whatever you can do to make that happen or help someone who's doing that or, you know, move towards it um, just feels really, really important. Not things you think you should do or things that you, you know, nothing that, I mean, we all have to do rock breaking, as they say, around your own passion projects, but really the stuff that's like, I am huge and luminous because I'm doing this work and I love it, like that's the stuff we should all be doing and moving towards um, finding people who are, you know, in that same boat with you, I guess. I love that and I have a follow-up question. So mm -hmm. thinking about um, preventing violence, mm -hmm. what is it that each of us can do as well in that realm? Yes, well that's a huge one. Um, you know, from the how can you help circle of six and tech for good perspective. <laughs> I mean, if people are super charged up about what we do, I would love to talk about that. If people have time and energy and smarts and passion, um, we're growing and we there's a million ways to deploy all of this goodwill and there's so much goodwill. So um, super open to talking to anyone who's interested in these like tech tools to prevent violence. Um, number one, as a human being anywhere in the world, um, making sure that you're as respectful as possible in the way you talk to each other and the way that you enact your sexuality. You know, um, it's so personal for everyone, preventing sexual violence, and it definitely starts with you, um, the individual and your choices. Um, a really key thing we can all do is if we're noticing something that's not cool, abusive language, abusive behavior, stepping in safely and carefully and saying, I don't like this, like, I don't like how you talk to someone, I don't like, you know, kind of being an upstander versus a bystander. Um, yeah, and looking for ways. There's a million people in the world doing anti-violence work. If you want to get more involved, we have resources on our site. Read up on it. There's brilliant thinkers talking about you know, new models of justice or new models of sexuality. Like, it's a huge issue, and it, and it encompasses a lot of things. It encompasses community organizing, justice, sexuality, health. There's all these different places you could find yourself in the scope. Um, so I would just encourage people to explore. Yeah. Maybe I should have been more concrete, but I don't know. <laughs> 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 well, I think that was pretty concrete if, if it's just a matter of don't just think about what you want to know, actually take the action to find out more about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, exactly. I think that was pretty concrete. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Nancy. I, I just, I really, you know, I think each one of these conversations just helps me understand where we need to move, what more people need to start doing. And it's all about, to me, just understanding what the issues are with the people right around us and ourselves, mm -hmm. and then starting to find the solutions for that. And I love your definition of, of leadership, because I think those four qualities really encapsulate it very well. So I just want to thank you for, for joining us today, and I'll let, I'll let you wrap up with, uh, with your thoughts. Well, um so happy to have you here, Nancy, because you bring so much into our world with everything that you're creating and with your leadership. And I think um, one of the things that I walk away with is a real positive. You know, we talk about preventing violence, which is, which is just rampant in every country in the world, and we're in 2014. But the notion of sexuality as a human right is one that we don't hear a lot about. Mm -hmm. And, you know, whether you're a woman or you have a different type of, of sexuality, whoever you are in the world, that is a human right, is such an important notion to have and to take leadership on that and to tell people it's okay and not to talk in the background. Mm -hmm. And then to also bring into the world a mobile tool because the world is mobile. That's where, you know, we're moving towards. Not everybody has the ability to sit in front of a computer. And that mobility connects us and technology connects us. So being able to have a safety network that you could tap into is just incredible. So my question to everybody who is uh, participating in this conversation is, what are you going to do? Let us know. Thank you so much. <laughs>
Well, thank you, Nancy, and thank everybody for joining us. And um, we encourage everybody, if you, you know, and Nancy, you too, if you know of somebody else that has a great story that we should be talking to, please let us know. Um, we are looking for all different types of examples. It can be from any part of the world, any issue. It can be, you know, a, a for-profit. It could be in a corporation. It could just be an individual. We, we just want to hear all aspects of all stories demonstrating kind of this leadership, um, this new generation of leadership, and, and what it really means and how all of us can really help out. So thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate it. Well, you're welcome. Thank you, guys, both of you.